Hello? Yes, he's just arrived. with me, Drake. I'm telling you, Rawson's our man. You were just as certain about poor Finlay. We're talking about Rawson. Even the least intelligent among us can see that he's living to rate three times his income. He's a compulsive drinker. Oh, I think we might be able to find other drinkers in the Navy if we really tried. We've had him under the microscope for a month. And you're nowhere. What if he is living it up? If that's proof of treason, it'll be a poor lookout for all of us. You're wasting time, Drake. Wasting time. That's great. Wait, bring in the real Rawson file. Look, you juggle a hot potato for four weeks and then drop it in a miner. All oh, right, Drake. We can't have this little menace running around with the laser trials coming up in a month. The Americans are on your back, too, I suppose. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mumford. Good uh, morning, Drake. Thank you, Jeffrey. Well, that looks a bit thin. Have you got everything in there? His tastes, his habits, his movements, and so on? I can even tell you the brand of toothpaste he uses. Well, let's skip his toilet preferences, shall we? Who are his friends? Where does he spend his evenings? Home, oh, mostly playing hi-fi records. But how close have you got to him? Hasn't anyone chummed up with him? He's a bit of a lone wolf. Somebody's really boobed on this one, haven't they? Yes, Drake. That's why you're here. You apply that friendly charm of yours, and we'll see where that gets us. Jeffrey can lay on all the help you need. Oh, well, thank you very much indeed, Jeffrey. But I, I'll just try and manage this one on my own. Hey, what's this? Change from ten shillings. Do what I planned. Ah, uh, come off it, Sonny. Well, it's worth a try, isn't it? Here, where's your jukebox, mate? We haven't got one. Oh, let's go down to the cave. I want to dance. Oh, I'm, I'm most terribly sorry, young lady. Take didn't... your hands off, you dirty old man. Oh, I'm ter terribly sorry, really. Mm. Uh, whiskey, please, uh, large one. Like a fat oh. oh. <laughs> No, sorry. Well, that's all right. Uh, uh, landlord, another drink for the young lady, please. Was it, Sue? I told you he was a dirty old man. Oh, what's he got here, Jackie Scorpio? Oh, Joe has Sebastian Batch preludes and fudges. What's on the flip side? Oh, another fudge. Fantasia and fudge in G minor. Uh, oh. That'll get in the top ten, all right. May I have my record back, please? Well, let's have a look. I don't want to lose my temper, you know. No, sir. Of course you don't. Hey, Bill, give it back. Oh, sir. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, you are a butt of fingers, really. <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. It isn't broken. Hey, Bill. Pick it up for the gentleman. Surely, surely. Oh, you're laughful. Now, that's enough from you lot. Well, look, can we help it if we're all so clumsy? I'm free to say actions will happen, won't they? All right, let's have you. Outside. Come along now. Come along. Don't you put your hands on me, Governor. Don't you touch me. Come along. And you too. It's ruined. 
one, I'm afraid. Yes. Yes, that's the one I, I shan't play again. Let me get you a drink. I hate violence, you see. <sighs> it's the barbarism that upsets me. It is usually such a quiet place. Yes, that's right. I'm uh, sorry about your disc. No, it's perfectly all right. Just, just forget about it. We'll forget about it, shall we? Uh, scotch? Um, oh, that's, that's kind of you. Uh, uh, make it a large scotch, oh, please, no, no, sir. Please, not a large one. You shouldn't. It's a pleasure. It's not every day one meets someone. Not scotch, sir? Discernment. <laughs> Thank That'll you. be five shillings, uh, sir. Discernment? Uh, Bach and Vivaldi. Thank you, sir. I see. Y you enjoy them, too. Music's my great passion. Uh, funnily enough, Vivaldi's my particular favorite. Um, Rawson's my name, by the way. D Dennis Rawson. Oh. Uh, John uh, uh, Kiernan. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Funny? Well, that, that one should meet a fellow addict because some youngsters decide to show off. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, a, a quirk of fate, I believe they call it. Let's drink to that, shall we? Yes, all right. The, uh, the uh, quirks of fate and the Valdi. When life gets impossible, I close the door, switch on the gramophone and bathe myself in music. The immortal sounds. Is life often impossible, though? I always wanted to be a pianist, but uh, I never had the flair. I suppose I, I lacked the application. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I can get as far as mangling a few Chopin preludes, but, uh... Oh, do you play? Oh, I uh, did try as a boy, but absolutely hopeless. Ah, I say, a pianola. That's something I can play. Uh, what is it, a shilling? Uh, 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 oh, I should have warned you off that. It makes the most unmusical sound. Yes. I say, come on, let's go and have a drink somewhere else, shall we? All right? All right, good. I, um, I live practically next door. Do you mind if I pop in and uh, dump this stuff? Yeah, that's fine. Good night, Dad. Good See night. you tomorrow. Thanks Good night, Dad. I haven't seen you uh, in the star before. Do you live around here? Hey, yes, but actually I do most of my drinking at the Black Horse. Ah, uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, look, um, why don't you just come in and have a drink here? At least it's nearer than the next pub. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. That's very nice, sir. Such a change to listen with someone who uh, who understands, who doesn't chatter. Yes, I prefer either to talk or to listen. It's a desecration to use a masterpiece as background music to conversation. Not that I have a problem there. I have few friends. What do you do for a living, John? I teach. At least I did teach. Well, don't you anymore? No, not now, but I will again. You see, actually, I'm I'm on extended leave. I. Had a little trouble, a nervous breakdown. Uh, then you shouldn't be drinking this stuff. No, not, not really. <laughs> Neither should I. Not as much as I do, anyway. There you are, you see. It helps to support the loneliness. I believe we're all lonely, every single one of us. Oh, we, we talk, we make smiles, we pretend to be interested in the other fellow. We have dogs, cats, families to lavish affection on. It's all useless. Dogs and cats die, children grow up. You always have to turn back on yourself in the end. I'll get some more ice. Thank you. It's a reproduction. One could hardly distinguish it from the real thing. <laughs> yes, we live in an age of 
perfect reproductions. Well, it has to be, hasn't it? I mean, where are the, where are the creators? Okay. I mean, what happened to Picasso after his, after his classical period? And uh, compare Coventry Cathedral with, say, say, Salisbury. There you have it in a nutshell. You see, oh, we can split the atom all right, of course, but man's soul went straight through the top of the mushroom. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to feel rather drunk. <laughs> I feel very good myself, actually. I, I, I suppose that when one is in congenial company, one relaxes and, and the drink gets to you sooner. Uh, is, is this a, another reproduction? <laughs> Yes, another reproduction. If all my reproductions were the real thing, I'd be a very rich man. Oh, you're not doing too badly, are you, Dennis? You, you, you must have a very good job. What, me? Hmm. I'm a bureaucrat, a very minor bureaucrat. But very well paid, obviously. Oh, my apartment is very comfortable, I agree. But then I like comfort. I'm not one of your stoics. Shall I tell you a little secret? A secret, Dennis? Don't tell me you've committed a bank robbery. <laughs> No, 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 nothing quite so spectacular as that, no, but I have some friends in the antique business. And I have an eye for a bargain, that's all. Tell me, what, uh, what subjects do you teach? Modern languages. Ah. Huh. You know, this is very good. Mmm, hokusai. And the Japanese always did have a supreme command of line. Yes, it's a question of taste, I suppose, really. This really is superb. There's nothing quite so difficult to achieve as simplicity. Do you think we could have a little more music? Mm. Why not? What would you like? Do, do you have for certain? But of course, by shallow rivers to whose falls melodious birds sing madrigal. Ah, yes. Madrigals. Something gentle. Something tranquil. I see we've got something else in common. We, we both support the same football team. <laughs> That's funny. I never pictured you as a, as a soccer enthusiast. That's just a bit of a relaxation. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I didn't see you as a, a typical football fan either. Oh, well, I, I never played, of course. I'm an observer. You see, soccer crowds give one the illusion of being an ordinary chap. You know, I've always tended to dream too much. I, Divorce myself from reality, that sort of thing. Well, there's nothing like 50,000 people all packed into a football stadium to bring you down to earth. You're part of one big beast. Offside, the beast roars. Penalty, hands, goal! And then the beast exults with a, a pagan thunder of pleasure. And it moans too. Oh, it moans as if it had been stuck with a butcher's knife. Are you sure we're talking about the same game? Mm. And there's another thing about games. I admire the purity. Purity? If I'm a better tennis player than you, I beat you. It doesn't matter if you've been to Eton and Magdalen and I've only been to the local grammar school. I beat you. Ah, yes, now I understand. A favor, privilege, money. But nothing really matters except ability. Ability, that's the... Uh, better hang on here, Drake. Well, Minister, it's the Admiralty again. Monodirectional beam. All right, Gordon. Skip the technicalities. Just tell me what it means. It means that if this information gets to the other side, our submarine communication system will be obsolete overnight. That's why we've got to nail Rawson at once, immediately. Rawson? Isn't that the chap you've been watching for weeks? 
The one you were sure was going to lead you to the whole of the network, and now you want to pull him in. Yes, we don't leave him on the loose now. Did your man agree to this? Yes, of course. Where did he get to, sir? A fellow who came in with you. I think I have all the facts, Minister. Oh, come in, will you? Right. Now, are you absolutely certain we should pull Rawson in? Me? Uh, no, sir. I'd rather let him run a bit. Drake's not conversant with all the facts, Minister. I suppose you have your own way of working. We must arrest Rawson right away, so may I use your phone? Uh, just a moment, Gordon, just a moment. Let's not forget that uh, I have the last word in this. Now, oh, uh, you haven't introduced us. Drake. John Drake. How do you know this man hasn't passed the stuff on already? I'm positive he hasn't. If he had, he'd have destroyed the photographs he made of the documents. He'd have burned them. Who's watching him now? Special branch. We've got a 24-hour watch on him. But I must emphasize the risk we're running, sir. Rawson's only got to elude us once. Half a minute would be enough. Yes, but Mr. Drake's not going to allow that to happen, are you? No, sir. Good. Well, I hope we don't let you down, Minister. Well, you'd better not. Oh, good night, gentlemen. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't join you. I'm waiting for Fred. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry about last night uh, passing out on you like that. <laughs> no, that's bad. I had a bit of a job getting home myself. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> hey, you better watch it or you'll miss the kick. All right, fine. I've been searching for you everywhere. My friend didn't turn up. Oh, that's, that's uh, too bad. Got a light, Tom. What do you think, Dennis? The draw at best. score. Well, there's still time. What's 
What's he up to? You've got him in a right old state, I'll say that. He can't keep still. Yes, good reason. What's he been up to, anyway? Watching football. The trouble with you people, nobody tells us what we're supposed to be doing. That's right. I once kept tabs on a man for ten days. I never knew what for. Did you resent it? I wouldn't say resent it, no. I would if I were you. time calling me. What happened at the match? I'm certain his contact was there. Well, I hope you're as certain he didn't pass his stuff on. He couldn't have done. You lost him twice in the ground, from what I hear. Now, look, you mustn't believe everything that Mumford tells you. I stayed closer to him than a Siamese twin. Uh, well, we did, anyway. Never mind that. Where do we stand? Well, he's got to pass on the stuff sometime. And when he does, Drake... I'll be there. Now, then, when are you coming in? I must... Lawson's on his way. What? <laughs> Over here, sir. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to think you're following me. Well, as, a, as a matter of fact, I am, Dennis. Are you expecting anyone? No, no, uh, sit down. Actually, I, I'd like to take this opportunity of repaying your hospitality of the other evening. That's nothing. It was my pleasure. Did you say th that you, you were following me? Yes, yes, I, I did. <laughs> well, why? Uh, you read it all now, gentlemen. Oh, yes. Uh, what would you like, Dennis? Um, I'll have uh, melon, please. Um, orange got rare, uh, no potatoes. Uh, uh, green salad, mushrooms, please. Yes, I'll have the melon. And I'll have the steak, uh, medium, please. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. Why, John? Uh, why was I following you? Yes. Well, it, it, um, it sounds most unconvincing, really. You see, after I left you, I decided that I, I didn't want to spend the evening alone. And you know that phone booth at the bottom of the mews? I went in there and I called up a friend of mine in Highgate. And uh, I'd hoped that he'd be free this evening. But he, he wasn't. No. No, he'd set his heart on going to see the new Fellini. But I'd seen it before, actually. As I put the phone down, you went past. You got quite a way ahead. And then I was beginning to catch you up. And I suddenly began to feel, well, a bit stupid, uh, embarrassed. Perhaps because I'd said I was, uh, I was going to have an early night. Yes, yes. Well, there you are. I've. I've changed my mind. Yes, and now I realize that perhaps I've been a bit selfish. You probably prefer to be alone this evening. Oh, splendid. Thank you. Ginger, sir? Uh, no, no, thank you. Not for me. I'd like some. Thank you so much. Lovely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ah, madame, if you come this way, I have your table ready. You know, you're rather a deceptive sort of chap. What way deceptive? Well, I thought you were rather round-shouldered when we first met, but uh, while looking at you now, you look in fine shape. You see what an afternoon in the fresh air does for you. Yes, it's, it's easy to be fooled by your, your glasses and the way you stand and... <laughs> oh, I... I really enjoyed that melon. Um, would you like a cigarette? Um, no, no, thank you, not for me. Do you mind if I smoke? No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, I seem to be, seem to be running out of fuel. Yeah, let me light it for you. It's no sense in flicking that thing, it's bone dry. Hmm, thank you. Yes, it's, I don't really know why I bothered to carry it about. <laughs> it's always empty. What are you 
supposed to be. What are the glasses for? I thought they might help to tone down my natural masculine aggression. I'm a kind of intellectual school teacher is the character I've been trying to sell. Oh, I see. The introvert. The thinker. Do you think you can get away with that trick? Uh, this chap here, standing next to Rawson, he stands out in a crowd, doesn't he? Mm, that's exactly why he can't be our man. Besides, I can't see him in the restaurant here. Uh, it's got to be one of these um, anonymous heads. Yes, a nondescript fella. That's who we're after. You know, this chap here might fit the bill. No, I've already checked him. He's not at the game. Oh, they're like sardines. How can you be so sure Rawson hasn't already passed the plans? We're not all as sure of your infallibility as you are, Drake. Oh, wait a minute, look at this. A woman? Yes, a woman. You see, she's in this one taken immediately after the game started, but not in this, taken ten minutes later. Well, she's not in any of these. She saw me with Rawson and got out of the way. Look, it's the same hair, strong jawline, the nose could be the same. There's a certain similarity. But I don't think you could definitely say it's the same woman in both pictures. If only she wasn't turning her head. Well, there's a strong resemblance. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I should say it's very possible. Oh, it's possible? Yeah, well, get out some blow-ups over in the restaurant, will you? Issue them to all the boys keeping tabs on Rawson. I'm sure that we can safely leave that in Geoffrey's hands, can't we, Geoffrey? Uh, Gordon. Mm. Have you, uh, have you noticed something about her? Well, what about her? She's quite attractive. Let me suggest to you, Drake, that for the present you've quite enough to do keeping an eye on Rawson. Oh, yes, of course, I know we have your reputation to lose, haven't we? <laughs> to have caught me in as a matter of fact. I was just going for my coat. Oh, and... really? Then, as you say, I was fortunate, wasn't I? Well, I'm awfully sorry, John, but I am really a bit pressed. Uh, oh, really? That's a pity. You can't be helped, I suppose. Yes. Oh, I was totally forgetting. I brought you a little present, a small return for some very pleasant company. Oh, oh thank you. I say, Dennis, do you think I could have a quick drink? Just, just a quick well, one. I it's rather nippy after this evening. I suppose just yes, a quick one. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to be so inhospitable, but... Um... If you're sure it's all right, I mean, I don't want to make you late or anything like that. Um... Uh, Scotch? Yes, yes, fine. You know, I think you're going to like this record. It makes a change. Something light, very light. Buzukia music, yes. It says here that the composer has succeeded, thank you, in expressing the simplicity, gaiety and joy of modern Greece. Oh, it sounds charming. Have you charming. got time to play just a small part of the second no, I'm side? Sorry. I'm sure you'd like it. Uh, John, I, I literally just have time to down this and fly. Oh, uh, uh, pity. Never mind. Another time. Cheers. Cheers. Lady? Uh, I don't, I don't follow you. Your appointment this evening must be a lady, mustn't it? Why? You're preoccupied, far away. Wrong on both counts. A, I am not meeting a lady, and B, I am not preoccupied, as you call it. I'm very much here. What are you getting at? Well, I'm not getting at anything, Dennis. It's just obvious that you've got something very important on tonight, that's all. Why the devil is it so important to you what I'm doing tonight, or any other night? Oh, now, you mustn't read things into what I'm saying, Dennis. After all, it's not that important, is it? Oh, perhaps I've been a bit nosy. I'm sorry about that. But you are very much on edge, Dennis. Would you like another drink? Something to steady your nerves? I don't want anything, thank you very much. I am simply late, very late, for my appointment. Now, if you don't mind... Oh, all right. Oh, there you are. I'll leave, then. Oh, uh, uh, which way are you going, Dennis? Perhaps you could share a taxi. No, we damn well won't share a taxi. Don't you understand? Occasionally, I like a little privacy. Occasionally, I like to be alone. Oh, all right, I see I've intruded. I'll, I'll leave at once, but you really ought to play some of that music. It's, it's very, very cheerful, Dennis. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Five days, he's come straight back from the office, locked the door, pulled the blinds, and nobody's been near him. Nobody. Just playing that... A high five, bathing himself in immortal sounds. <laughs> Batches and fudges. Immortal sounds and alcohol. Yeah, I don't think he's ever going to move.
tomorrow. I'm talking of moves. I've made mine. Yeah. Well, incidentally, I told G that you boys were unhappy about not knowing what's going on. Oh, thanks. How did he take it? Didn't like it. Asked me to keep an eye on you. You know, you're not people like us. You're married, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've often wondered what it was like, a wife, children, roots, and uh, all that. Well, can be all right. Yeah. Oh, my game. Huh? You've left yourself wide open. He's away! <laughs> I was just closing, sir. Is there something I can do for you? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. You see, I'm in a bit of a fix. It's my aunt. I, I've been to two or three shops, but I don't seem able to find it. Well, uh, what was the book, sir? Well, it's one of a set. Pride and Prejudice, leather bound, green and gold lettering. My aunt lent it to me, and I'm afraid that I lost it. You've come to the wrong place. I'm afraid we specialize in Incanabula. In, in, in Canabula? Books printed before 1600. Oh, really? How, how very interesting. Y you mean to say that, uh, that all these books here are, are, are over 300 years old? Yes, sir, that's right. But uh, we really are close, sir. Yes. And, and you've no idea where I might be able to find the Jane Austen? Well, frankly, I think you'll find it a little difficult. We don't like to break up a set for just one book, you know. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, good night, sir. Yes, I, I'm terribly sorry to have included. Good Most night, kind of you to, to see That's quite me. all right. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks again. Same again, please.
don't want, Gordon. You'll do, Jeffrey. The special branch been on about Rawson's whereabouts? Special branch? That's not Drake, is it? Uh, yes, sir. He wants to know where Rawson is. What? Here, give me that. What is all this? Somebody's slipped up. You mean you've lost him? I want Rawson pulled in. Get on to special branch. We should have done this in the first place. <laughs> drinking. But I, I'm not drunk. Well, how'd you know you haven't been followed? I was, I was, but I managed to give him the slip. Now, can we settle up? Time for that later. Now! All right, clear out. Come upstairs. I'll give you the money there. They know about me, you know, they know. I'm finished. I do no more. No more! It's the end. Voice down. Who was it? Not the man I saw you with at the match. Yes, that's the man. The man who was following me now till I lost him. That's the man. That's the damned man. Could be that you're damned too, Rosalind. Who are you? Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief. Uh, have you got a light? What are you doing here? Ask him. He knows, don't you, Rawson? Do you know this man, Dennis? I'm more of a ghost to him than a man. He's praying that I'll disappear. He's praying that this is a nightmare and he'll wake up. Come on, Rawson, pull yourself together. Tell her about me. Well, who are you? Has he done something wrong? Are you a policeman? Do you have a warrant to be in my room like this? Yes, he has done something wrong. No, I am not a policeman. I do not have a warrant. I could never be a policeman. I couldn't stand the regulations. I'm like you. I work outside the law. I've no idea what you're talking about. Yes. Talk, talk, talk. You do a lot of that, don't you? Talk about, about music, about sport, about being a teacher. And I believed him. Yes, even in the restaurant, I wasn't sure. I wasn't certain what was going on behind those glasses. But you're not wearing the glasses now, are you? You've dropped your... You're masquerade now, haven't you? You'd like to hit me, wouldn't you? Why don't you go ahead? I'm not quite sure what the quarrel is between you two, but I wish you'd clear out of here and carry it on somewhere else. You've been following me right from the start. From the moment those thugs came into the pub. Dennis, for heaven's sake! Haven't you? Go and get yourself a drink. You want a delight, I believe. Hmm. You know, we'd be all right if it weren't for the amateurs. They're fine till the pressure's on, then they begin to crumble. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you're not making any kind of sense to me at all. Am I not? No. I'm a British subject. Canadian. My passport's in order. I've been carrying on business here for the last five years. And your business is books, old books, in cannabula. <laughs> you're very well informed. I also specialize in four-edge painting. Oh, oh please, be careful. That's priceless. Mm. And this? Is uh, this valuable? Uh, very valuable. It's part of a do-I Bible. A Bible? <laughs> Hardly the sort of thing for a good Marxist to be dealing in, is it? Look, I don't know what kind of establishment, if any, you represent. But I do resent this treatment, and I don't intend it should go on. Now, you better clear out of here, or else I shall be forced to. Call the police. And this book that Rawson brought you just now, is that valuable? It's worth a few shillings. Mm. Rawson brings you a book of poetry. <laughs> How charming. I see nothing exceptional in a close friend doing that. Close friend, not a lover. You can interpret that any way you choose. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Lover. <laughs> That's marvelous. How about that, Rawson? Are you her lover? You heard her. You can interpret it any way you choose. The complete works of Ernest Dawson. The complete works. It didn't write very much, did he? Poems aren't vegetables. You don't buy them by the pound. Courage is catching. Or uh, is it the drink? You know, I'm not familiar with the works of Mr. Dawson. 
It's hardly surprising, is it? Ernest Dawson, born 1867, died 1900. Didn't live very long, did he? Ah, I hear something that's really very appropriate. They are not long, the days of wine and roses. Out of a misty dream, our path emerges for a while, then closes. I wonder where the microdots are. What's wrong with you? Are you mad? You don't know anything about microdots, do you? I think you're crazy. And you weren't going to post this book out of the country, were you? You, you talk nonsense! Dennis has been promising to lend me this for some time. I was simply going to read it and give it back to him. You deny any knowledge of microdots? I don't know what you're talking about. Then I'll tell you. One of these pages can be photographed by a 35 millimeter camera and the negative reduced in size through a series of lenses until it is no bigger than a full stop. Shall I go on? I know nothing about photography. Well, fortunately, Rawson does. He has all the equipment. Do you remember the time that you passed out? I wonder why the door off your bedroom was locked. Fortunately, you carried a key ring in your pocket. But all this has got nothing to do with me. Don't know anything about Dennis's private life. You hear that, Rawson? It's as you said. We're all alone. We all have to turn back on ourselves in the end. That's what you said, isn't it? She's as plausible as you are, you know. Oh, she can talk, too. She made me feel important. She made me feel strong. She pretended to be interested in the same things until she got me to commit myself. Don't get hysterical, You'll Dennis. You'll have 15, maybe 20 years alone, and she, she'll leave you to it. Oh, you're so clever, aren't you? Both of you, you're both so damn clever, but you're not quite so clever. Be quiet! This is what he wants. What he wants? <sighs> you shouldn't have done that, Diane. You really shouldn't have done that. You see this, Mr. Anonymous, this mirror, mirror on the wall? That's what you want. Dennis! You press one corner here and it comes away from the wall. Yeah. It comes, it comes away from the wall. It comes away from the wall! I've cut my finger. Yes, it's a radio transmitter. It has 150 watt output, a high frequency band, and you won't find a maker's name. I have to make sure. It's quite simple, isn't it? Merely doing your job. You did your best. My turn to lose. Let's get it over with as quickly as possible. Fortune is like the English climate, changeable. Had any luck with Jane Austen? Well, as you can see, none at all. You said you'd be back an hour ago. I know, but I got delayed. Never mind the explanations. Check him. It's all over. We'll have to leave the country. What should we do about him? Oh, yeah. What are we going to do about you? Uh, I don't suppose you're open to suggestions, are you? We can either kill you or take you with us. Well, my passport's in order. We'd better get rid of him. No, he comes. He might be useful in case he's got someone watching the house. Get through to the airfield. Are the tanks ready for takeoff at eight? Internal flight, Glasgow. Diane, let me stay. We could settle up and I could take my chance. Diane, please, please listen to me. No, I won't listen to you. You'll answer for your behavior later. <laughs>
No smoking. Oh, come now. A, a lady driver. Something to steady my nerves. Come on, put it out. Good afternoon, Mr. Drake. I just wanted to offer you my personal congratulations, and I'm sure Mr. Gorton would like to join in. Uh, yes. Congratulations, Drake.